I think in mathematics, writing is probably more central than it is to other fields, and that's because of the nature of the discipline, which is centered on proof, um, argumentation, and perspective, convincing, uh, convincing people and making them understand is central to mathematics. And it's also the difficulty of writing mathematics, which makes it very important. And as a result, probably it's the only subject where elegance of the writing is, is, is central to how we see the subject. One of the most famous books in mathematics is called Proofs from the Book. It's one of these concepts from the mathematician Paul Erdős, where he collected proofs and arguments that were so beautiful they would be in God's book. Uh, and I think the idea of things being able to be in God's book is something peculiar to mathematics. So there's an idea, if you hear a proof then that is so beautiful, then you'd say it's from the book. And there have been collections of such things. And the reason that's so important is because mathematics is not just about finding out what's true and telling people when it's true. You want to know why it's true and you need to convince them that it's true and also why, in retrospect, it's obviously true. Uh, so as a result, the greatest mathematicians have tended to be, although not always the greatest writers, and what absolutely is true is that really terrible writers have really hurt themselves as mathematicians. If you have a fantastic idea and no one understands you, it doesn't count. Uh, if you have a fantastic idea and you don't get across why it's so beautiful, it doesn't count. So writing mathematics is, is, is central for that reason, and it's central for a second somewhat surprising reason, because once you have an idea, you have to write it down. And when you write it down, clearly, concisely, and convincingly, that's when you find out where the flaws in your thinking actually are. It's in the revision, revision, revision process that really you actually learn some of the most important mathematics. When you find a gap in your argument and you realize that that is where the heart really is and that takes you back to days or weeks of further thinking, that's where the real mathematics happens. I think communicating with people who speak a different language it is very important and it's a similar skill and shouldn't be, shouldn't be separated from the idea of writing to, uh, to fellow mathematicians. And the key thing is to know your audience and speak to your audience. And that means being able to speak to your audience, meaning being able to speak to uh, the person who's taking the same class, the person in the same research group, but also to the granting agency and also to your, your grandparents when you tell them what you're doing. You don't need to get across the precise detail of the latest idea you've had, but you should be able to convey the, uh, the spirit of what you're doing. If you can't explain why you're doing what you're doing, then, well, that's fairly sad, and you're not going to be able to convince a granting agency. But more importantly, you're not going to have a fulfilling life. And I think the process of thinking through doing what you're doing is very important. And secondly, there's sometimes when you want to convince someone without a technical background of some technical fact, and that's a new skill, a difficult skill, when, uh, that we see happening with budget negotiations in Washington, uh, in, in, uh, uh, in, when thinking about issues in the tech industry. There are often things where there are issues of fundamental things that are true or false, and it's subtle as to why they're true or false. Why does Wall Street do what it does? Uh, who's responsible for certain actions? Uh, you need to really understand what's going on and be able to explain things to people who really not only don't speak the language, but don't have the background. So this takes practice, and there's no, there's no royal road to that, as, to that as well. The point I'd like to make is the kinds of mistakes people make when they learn mathematics and either become mathematicians or at least learn to think in a very sophisticated math way mathematically. And I mean this of our, of our best students. Uh, and a good example is when people are writing either a senior thesis or a PhD thesis, where they do the work, they have the idea, and they say, now all I have to do is write it up. And uh, they leave remarkably little time for the writing. Uh, and those who plan out in advance and write and write and write and revise and re revise and revise, write great theses. I guess I would say it's not true that a good writer is a good mathematician or that a good mathematician is a good writer, but there is a surprising correlation. There are great, great mathematicians who are terrible, terrible writers, uh, who are famous in spite of their ability to communicate because their ideas are just so great. That's not the person you want to be. If you are that person, that's great. But uh, there are also many great mathematicians whose ideas have changed at least the mathematical world, in many cases the world, period who changed the world because of their ability to have incredibly powerful ideas and to get them across in an incredibly powerful way. So I think, to speak precisely, there's a high correlation between the ability to write well as a mathematician and the ability to be a good mathematician.